What's up everybody? So today we're going to take a look inside of my process for writing an epic orchestral hybrid cue. Uh, so we're going to take a listen to Aries, God of War, and then we're going to talk about it on the flip. Here we go. Right, so there you have it. Aries God of War. Um, again, epic orchestral uh, hybrid cue. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, you enjoy that as you can hear. I mean, we start off um, pretty aggressive, you know, out the gate. Um, and I think with these types of cues, um, you know, at least I wanted to um, in, in constructing this, uh, you know, some slow burns may start not as aggressively, um, but I kind of wanted to uh, come out the gate smoking on this one. So um, just kind of to get inside it a little bit, you know, first and foremost, um, it's talking about the chord progression. It's a real different um, kind of chord progression. So it's in G minor uh, and the chord progression is G minor to E flat major seven to B minor. And it does that again. And then it ends on a C minor to an A major. So let's kind of talk about um, how we get into the cue. So uh, for me, I, I wanted to kind of onset the whole cue um, with a, a timpani crescendo and, um, and typically uh, lots of times I'll use a cymbal swell to kind of get me into a cue. So we did the cymbal swell, but accompany with the, uh, the timpani crescendo. And this is what we have here. So just that, I don't know something about that timpani uh, crescendo to me that really kind of sets the mood. Uh, for what we need. And then, of course, um, right out the gate, it's, it's really about low brass, um, also low winds, because I have a, a contra bass clarinet along with uh, uh, the bass bones, uh, tuba, of course, my favorite Pandora burst, um, and then the monster low brass as well. And we have our trombones pretty much just carrying uh, the chord progression in, in that uh, beginning part. So um, just to start the cue, if you hear the brass and then the low 
a contrabass clarinet, we have um, this movement uh, here. Uh, let's start right on it. And basically, I mean, you know, hey, Aries, God of War. I mean, right out the gate, we're just talking, you know, we're coming just just with a lot of aggression, um, a lot of nastiness. If you add, of course, um, the bass in there as well. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> I always have uh, a sub bass. But one thing I want you to hear is these legend. Listen to these legendary low strings. I love this um, particular patch here. Abbey Road One. This is just a great sound. Oh man, it, it just to me sounds so good. And then when you match that up with the sub bass. Just really, really nice. The sub bass gives it some nice weight um, without being um, over the top. So again, if you have those elements, of course, with the brass, with the uh, contra bass clarinet, and then add the percussion in, this is what you get. And then on our wins, our other wins, actually on the second half, uh, you know, you guys heard the um, the ostinato come in. So, the, you know, of course the strings are carrying, but in the winds, I kind of have the winds supporting um, the string ostinato a bit. So we have the um, clarinet short, the oboe, uh, corn glay, the flute, uh, and the bassoon. And then I also have uh, this ensemble patch and, you know, by itself, it doesn't really sound that great to me, but in the mix, I, I think it sounds pretty good. So these are the short winds, uh, what I have happening with the short woodwinds. Okay. And then if we couple that with our viola and celli, we have. So you hear that, um, of course. Uh, and then if I want to break out the, um, the celli and viola so you can just hear how they play off of each other. So there you have it. Um, and, you know, you put those elements together, uh, they kind of work. And then I just have some other uh, kind of uh, on the long winds, um, just a little harmonic uh, support with the, the long winds. So I'll, I'll put all the, the woodwinds um, in there together and you'll hear it. And so you, you hear the upper winds, the flute, the clarinet, and the oboe uh, on that melodic line. And they actually play that melodic line uh, with the um, horns as well. And the horns are, I mean, super powerful uh, when, when they do come in. But those other uh, elements are there just to kind of help support um, that line just a little bit. And I also have a glockenspiel um, as well. So if I add those in... And that kind of gives us that whole, it's like the announcement uh, before we 
actually really uh, getting to our theme. So all this is a build up, build up, build up, announcing, announcing, announcing. Uh, and then we're little, literally into the theme uh, with the uh, melody. And I guess the only other thing that I'll show you is the uh, the tenor trombone, because uh, as I said, they're just kind of um, playing the, the chords. And that's it. I mean, they're just playing, um, you know, the chords, just kind of holding that harmonic uh, structure kind of underneath everything. And that's really it outside of, you know, the arpeggios kind of spelling out the chords as well. Um, that That's pretty much all we have there. So, like I said, that's our first section. We get that announcement. And then, of course, we get a big drop. And then... Um, Guys, another thing um, about, I think, uh, writing, especially orchestral hybrid, is trying to get a, a sound, you know, that's sort of, you know, your signature sound for that particular cue um, or whatever is, is something that I tried to go um, towards. Um, and you hear kind of like that, um, you know, that big, uh, drop or whatever, really that big uh, kind of rise that you hear, and I'll, I'll play it for you after the drop. So that that big fall there. So um, that is is the Halion. I know some people say Halion, 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 uh, however you may say it. But um, to my point is. Um, so what we have here is, let me pull it over here, <clears throat> excuse me, so the patch um, is the root solo from Halion. And it's actually a really cool synth. It's got a lot of really cool uh, sounds in it. And then um, you see, I mean, I'm you know pretty heavy on the mix of the delay, you know, filter attack, you know, all the way up, distortion up, you know, pretty high resonance, et cetera. Now, what I am doing is obviously, as you can hear, I mean, the, the, the pitch bin is obviously automated. So again, we hear that sound. Right, and it's just, a, you know, goes down an octave. Now, the other thing that I do have is, well, I mean, is I am crushing I am crushing it. And when I say crushing it, as you see with this decapitator with the distortion, I mean, I got the punish on, the drive is almost at eight. And, and I mean, I'm just pushing it, the crap out of it, quite honestly. I might got it all the way in the red. I mean, really, really just hammering um, you know, the sound or whatever, just uh, crushing it with a lot of distortion. Um, but I think it really works kind of, you know, creating a sort of, you know, sound that sounds just a little different, uh, you know, from kind of, you know, everything and, and making that um, part of the cue. And then that just leads us into now the melody actually being introduced for the first time. So is this... So you can hear it against the changes. Yeah. yeah. Then. And that's to the A major chord there. So that's the melody. And so the melody, I actually have um, flute, oboe, glockenspiel, clarinet, but the clarinet's doing a harmony to the melody, horn and violin <laughs> all playing the melody. And then I have the trumpets uh, pick it up uh, on the backside and I have some tubular bells 
for melodic support, just to try to help the melody cut through all of the other aggression that's happening, the drums, the ostinato, all that good stuff. So see if you can, you know, identify uh, the melody as I play it. You know, I may have needed to to even bring it out more in the mix. So, you know, let me know what you guys think. So here we go uh, with everything in, in the melody coming up. So yeah, there you have it. And again, another announcement that I, I just think coming from that C minor to that A major is just such a, I don't know, it's such a cool movement. It really, you know, brings a lift, I think, going into the next section. Um, I, I think that's a, a, a pretty cool movement um, there. So another thing that I'll point out for you. So of course you, you heard the melody and again, um, you know, all the, um, you know, instruments that are playing, um, I, I think it's really important to help it cut through. And then as you see some, I have a lot of color uh, stuff that I'm doing uh, with my muted trumpets and um, I've got yeah, trumpets with the Harmon mutes, et cetera. So I just kind of want to kind of show you what I'm doing there with those. So So, um, and, and my point being here is, you know, don't be afraid to use other elements and just the, you know, the full tilt of what you have at your um, disposal within the orchestra. I mean, I'm using muted trumpets. I'm using trumpets without mutes, all kinds of just I have rips, you know, all kinds of stuff in there. So, you know, the, the orchestra, there's so many colors and so many tones um, that you can use to create um, the sound you want and to create interest. Um, so yeah, de definitely don't be afraid to, you know, kind of dig in, uh, to some of those things, you know, using your mutes and using, you know, different articulations, um, as well to try to accomplish the sound that you're looking for. So, um, you know, outside of that, like I said, I, I, um, I do have, I think at this point is where I kind of introduced the, um, the tubular bells. Uh, for, you know, a little support as well. So I'm going to play all of the um, melodic uh, elements for you in this section so you can kind of hear just how they work together and what kind of color, um, you know, you can create using these um, various things. So again, so we have flute, oboe, and then the clarinet is harmonizing the melody and believe it, you know, clarinet by itself. And then we have the horns, um, carrying melody as well, and the glockenspiel, and then we have some tubes for melodic support, and then we have our strings, and you you guys, it, you're starting to learn at least, you know, now I do add in some um, full ensemble, sometimes patches with my uh, normal um, string patches as well, just to give it a little more beef. So here we have the, just the melodic elements. So real, you know, when you hear it without the bottom end and how those chords move, you just hear how it creates, creates sort of this 
kind of otherworldly, you know, epic type of cue. So um, that's pretty much all we have in that section, besides the fact that, of course, the drums have now you, you, you look here and then you look here. You see, we've added a couple of additional layers. So one thing we added is a ferrum. Um, and so we have that very low impact. So that's the ferrum giving us low impact. And then we have a ferrum just kind of giving us a little mid high punch. So you hear that hit. So that's added in. And then we added in our, our um, trail hits and I'll start a little earlier so we can build in. So now that's the additional punch that we have, you know, in section two and how we continue to kind of build on our drums. And then we come out of section two, uh, getting into section three. Uh, and when we get into the last section, um, we kind of still hint uh, at the melody and our harm uh, the harmony changes just a little bit. So instead of going from that, So now um, we're going from G minor to G minor first inversion, which just is just the G minor over the B flat. Uh, and then to a D flat minor. And we do that the first couple of halves of the phrase. And then the second half of the phrase, we do G minor. G minor over F, or really like a G minor seven with the seventh in the bass. And then we go back to that D flat minor, but then we move to a B flat minor. I know it just sounds all over the place. But somehow it works, is all I can say. I'm not even really sure um, how I came up with the changes, but, but it, it seems to work. And then the other thing that we add in this section is now we add choir. You know, if it's epic, you got to have choir. So we wait until the third act to bring in the choir just to give it uh, some more lift. And as you can see, the drums are even developed more. We add um, snare drum, military um, <clears throat> snare as well. Uh, we add trailer hits. I mean, just all type of energy. So I'm, I'm going to play uh, just a little bit of get into the third section for you. Then I'm going to break down a couple of the uh, elements there. I mean, as you hear, there's just all kinds of stuff going on. So the first thing that happens is our, you know, kind of special synth uh, element that I showed you guys earlier. So now I think that's going up. It's doing a two octave riser, I think. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, so that's just kind of rising up, you know, kind of taking us to the apex. Now, one thing I do want to show you is what I am doing with the choir. So we have uh, the men and, and women's choir here. And if you hear that, oftentimes I'll just do an epic ah or ooh or oh or something. But in this particular regard, I really felt like I wanted the choir uh, to be saying a phrase. Um, and I am using um, the choir from East West. Let me get that over here for you. So <clears throat> it is the um, Hollywood Choir's Diamond uh, from uh, East West. So this is the uh, men's choir. And just to show you what I did. So in the player, they actually have a word builder. And the word that I uh, 
came up with was Brutum Fulman. Had no idea what it meant uh, at the time that I found it. I just was looking for, I needed something that was going to give me four syllables, basically. Brutum full men brew. So that's the pacing that I was looking for. So basically, um, all you do is once you get your word builder up, um, go to phrases. And the cool thing is it has all kinds of stuff here, I, you know, um, English phrases, and you see a ton of them. But I wanted something Latin, you know, I, I guess I should have gone uh, Greek, but I, there's nothing Greek here. So so I went Latin, and then uh, I found that uh, Brutum Fullman, and, um, you know, it worked. So so the phrase build is pretty cool. Now, you do hear that kind of by itself, um, I mean, it doesn't sound like amazing <laughs> or anything, but in the mix, I think it sounds um, pretty cool. And, and that's the thing. Oftentimes, you may found, find something that, you know, just... By itself, it doesn't seem to work, but don't be concerned, too concerned about that if it works in the mix, if it works in the context of everything else, then at the end of the day, you're still golden. Um, so yeah, so we did our word builder with our men uh, and our women's choir. Um, and then of course, um, you know, we have, uh, let's see, the, um, Astonado, like really, really um, kind of churning away here um, as well. So I, I'll play that Astonado for you. So you see, I mean, just kind of building, 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 building um, on the intensity and trying to use, you know, all of the orchestra to really give us that um, big uh, dy dynamic sound. Um, and so <clears throat> when we get to this part, the other thing that we introduce is we introduce some horn rips. So. And I think these rips sound great. And of course, um, that is um, the center brass. And where are we? Horn ensemble rips are right there. So that's what we have. And we're just using um, the, the Dennis Sands mix. Um, and you see, I had to. Um, the uh, track delay um, is pretty aggressive at almost minus 100 to really get those rips to kind of lock uh, where I needed them to lock, but I think they sound great. And so not only did I do French horn uh, rips, but in this last section, I also have some piccolo uh, rips as well. And you see, of course, the negative track delay is just minus 80 um, for the piccolo there. But man, it is amazing now that they're, they're low in the mix, but it, they just add something to the excitement uh, of this last section. And again, um, you know, that coupled with, again, our trumpets, um, you know, utilizing that whole da -da -da -da, you know, you see the, uh, the 16th note uh, triplets. Um, that are happening within our trumpets. Um, so if we play that here. It's just, man, those types of elements. And um, I think the other, and I actually have, so those, I have a couple of things. So I have the center brass, trumpets um doing that and then i also have the um bbc 
trumpets. Let's take a look at those. So, and I'm using the actual multi tone um, there. So let's just take kind of take a look at um, what they're doing there. So, so you see how now I'm using key switching. So, you know, really cool. And of course, I'm, I'm using the uh, trumpets of twice, just three trumpets um, there uh, within the section. And just trying to blend, I mean, you know, BBC with center brass, but I think they blend pretty well. Um, of course, I have them, um, you know, set to the same reverb, but I, I think they they blend um, pretty well. So I don't know, what do, you, what do you guys think? Do you think it's a, a pretty decent blend of the two? So there you have it in terms of, you know, what the Trump is doing, but they, they bring so much, I think, so much excitement and so much power uh, to it. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to play just through that last section, um, that last section. So we, we had our ribs, we have our choir, we got our, our trumpets, you know, doing all of the triplet. Uh, work and things of that nature and still our low brass chugging away We've got the ostinatos going um, of course we have all this additional low end activity with our trailer hits um, and all that good stuff so it you know just kind of listen through and I'll just uh, kind of play it through to the end so you can hear the uh, the button that we do and of course um, we do have another drop and of course one more um, you know, hearing that, that custom sound, if you will, uh, play out one more time before it ends as well. So here we go. Yeah, so, I mean, there you have it. I think the only other thing, I just wanted you to hear the difference um, in, in the drums uh, in this last section. I'll take the Glock in out, but listen to the power of the drums in this last section. And all that, all that power is accomplished by layering. And, and I'm not, I promise you, I'm not going like super, look at the velocities. I mean, the velocities aren't like screaming. If I put this on velocity, look. So you see the velocities aren't like in the red or anything like that. I mean, if, if you look at, you know, what we're looking at in terms of 64, you know, 78, 56, 49. So you don't have to have your velocity screaming, um, you know, all in the red to get the power that you're looking for. Um, if you just kind of layer then yeah, we do have some like on the downbeat, you'll have, OK, yeah, I want those to hit. But look at all the stuff in between. I mean, I, what my point being, everything is not just on red and, <laughs> and you're like just beating a stew out of all the drums. That's not the way that you get an epic sound with your drums. The way that you get an epic sound is through layering. Larry, make sure that your bottom end is taken care of. 
with, um, you know, slower, you know, and more deliberate hits. Look at the spacing. You can see the spacing on uh, my low stuff, um, even if we open that back up. If we open this back up, you see the spacing in terms of how the low drums are hitting. So they have time to hit. You know, it's a pretty low drum. So it's got time to hit and kind of release before it hits again. Another pretty low drum. And you hear all that resonance in the drum. So you just can't be bub, 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 you know, beating it and not giving it time. So that if, if I had a, a tip, I guess, in this whole cue, it would be, you know, for your epic drums, you know, just make sure that you layer, just take kind of take your time to layer. And as you guys see, I'm using a lot of um, instances of damage. Um, and basically what I'll do sometimes is like, um, let me just kind of show you guys here. <laughs> so I'll do like multiple instances of damage and, you know, just set them on different MIDI channels um, and then just kind of set up, you know, what it is that I need on that particular channel. That way I can separate them out and that's how I can have my high, uh, you know, my highs and my mid highs and lows. And then I can separate those on tracks in my mix. So I'm not treating them the same. I'm not treating my low drums the same as I'm treating my mid drums or my high drums. They may have different EQ on them, things of that nature. So uh, just something to kind of consider um, as you are um, kind of putting together your cue. So, um, you know, as always, hopefully this was, you know, uh, helpful to you, informative. And if it was, you know, please uh, subscribe or, you know, like. Uh, the channel is always it, it'll help me out um, I have some other content on the channel um, that I'd love for you to check out um, hopefully uh, it'll be helpful to you as well so thank you so much for spending this time with me and look for another breakdown next week all right take care and peace